This video is brought to you by Public. Stick around to hear more about the special offer they're providing to the entire Upper Echelon community. Also, exclusive holiday merchandise. Please consider buying one. This video ended up being rather expensive to make. All right, everyone saw the title, and I'm just going to hit you with the truth here. It's kind of clickbaity. Obviously not everyone you see online is fake, but after a fairly substantial amount of investigation, discussion with inside sources, and social digging, I'd like to present what I found with regards to social media influencers and the corrosive reality of what is, and more likely is not, real engagement. Here's the hook. Let's call it my proposition for you to continue watching the video. Yesterday, I ran the largest Twitter spaces in the world for Web3, NFTs, and crypto. It was me. I had the largest concurrent listener count, the largest number of total clicks. I gained traffic from people I had never met before, purely because of the size. And all of it was fake. Throughout the entire broadcast, I was open and plain about what this really was and why I was doing it. This was an experiment, nothing more, nothing less. Could I take a relatively unknown burner account on Twitter and turn it into the largest crypto spaces on the entire platform within, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes? Answer, yes. Yes, I could. I'd like to state very plainly that the inspiration for this video came from a user named Mr. Zero Chill on Twitter. After having a decent conversation with him in the background, his work exposing bot traffic and detailing issues within social media was instrumental in my own production, and as a result, I'll be linking to his profile down below. This is the reality. Many, many of your favorite online influencers, from fitness to finance, crypto, fashion, and more, are powered by an artificial engine of bot traffic and fake engagement. Now, some people may hear this and say, yeah, no shit. But the problem is far deeper and more infectious than many are currently aware of. And today, we're going to look at exactly how it's done. All right, today's video sponsor, if you want to diversify your investments or even explore investing for the very first time, is public.com. Public.com is an investment platform that helps members learn and become better in the space. One of the best aspects of this platform, in my opinion, is something called payment for order flow, or in this particular case, a lack of that procedure. A lot of platforms will actually flat out sell your data, your trade data to market makers, and public.com does not participate in this activity, which is a tremendous positive in my eyes. With advanced company-specific data, unique market metrics, and analyst insights, public.com will better inform investors on how they wish to trade with options for alternative assets as well, including everything from traditional investments like stocks and ETFs, all the way to things like art and collectibles, such as a PSA 10 first edition Charizard card that has been securitized with the SEC, or even retro video games, a market I found myself becoming extremely interested in. If you click the link down below or go to public.com slash UEG, you'll get one free stock worth up to $300 when you create your account. And for a limited time, when you sign up, you can get up to $10,000 when transferring your existing account from another broker. Details are down below in the description. Again, public.com slash UEG or click the link down below to sign up today. Big thank you to public for sponsoring the channel. Here's how it all works. Now, this is not a tutorial per se, but we're all adults here and this time I won't be taking steps to censor anything. Full disclosure, I don't care if my Twitter account gets banned, and it might for publicly acknowledging all of this. It's a burner anyway, but I'd like to be fully clear that this is not something ethical people do. This is a dishonest practice that happens to be extremely common in the world of social media, and it is highly frowned upon. Do not do it. You can lose your profile, thus losing the money that you spent, and you can destroy your online reputation. Do not do this. I make this video as an expose, not a tutorial. Keep that in mind. Anyway. First, you need a foundation or an account. There are plenty of options here, but the website I used, more on this later because I didn't actually use that account in my experiment, was called PlayerUp. PlayerUp sells Twitter accounts, not just Twitter accounts, but Facebook pages, Instagram pages, YouTube channels, TikTok profiles, everything. That's not the only site either. There's more, like FameSwap, Social Tradia, Swapped, Two Fame, ACCS, etc., etc. But for my own personal experiment, I used PlayerUp. Scrolling through, I started to look for a crypto-centered NFT profile. There is an entire section of the bot ecosystem now, exclusively focused directly on Web3 crypto and NFTs, so that was just a really easy example to use. It turns out, according to a series of interviews that I did, and questions I asked of the sellers, that pretty much every single main stage selling profile on PlayerUp is running through upwards of 10 to 20 profiles per week, many of them in excess of 100,000 followers. According to one seller who I had a brief conversation with, they were processing, quote, 10 plus accounts weekly and were able to get me a 100,000 follower account within two days if I paid up front. Now, to be clear here, the best sellers will always use escrow. After an interview with a vendor who completely panicked when they realized 
who I was and why I was interviewing them in the first place, begging for anonymity, which I will grant them, the highest reputation sellers are able to run through over a dozen accounts per week easily that can total anywhere from 100 to 500,000 followers each individually, where the majority of those followers are actual people, real people, who simply engage heavily with whatever space the farmer has targeted. To confirm this, they showed me a couple of profiles that they had previously sold recently, all over 300,000 followers. And while asking that I not show these profiles in particular in the video, it's easy to find more. Sellers are extremely upfront when asked about their inventory. All it takes is a couple of telegram messages and you'll be looking at a wide range of options, usually smaller profiles since the larger ones always sell out first, out of which you can choose practically anything. Adult themed accounts meant for advertising only fans after scrubbing previous media and pictures. NFT accounts meant to monetize developers or projects as you promote their work and their offering or their token for money. Or even health and fitness options where all you have to do is start pushing run of the mill lifestyle tips while harnessing sponsorships from dieting applications and workout supplements, oftentimes shady companies. Basically, out of the box, you can have a monetizable social media profile with moderate engagement, moderate to low engagement, in a target industry of your choice that serves as your basic foundation. That's all well and good, but this is where it gets a little bit murky, because this enormous bank of quickly sold out social media profiles is cultivated in a variety of different ways. Some of them are automated to like and follow community members in the space they are targeted to grow. Others are hacked accounts that have been rebranded away from the initial owner, that's an extremely common one, and some of them are filled with bought followers to appear larger than reality. Those are the disingenuous ones. The trick is finding one that is mostly grown over the span of months by actually participating, even if that participation is rudimentary at best, in the target ecosystem. Let's say NFTs for right now, but this translates into pretty much any other popular consumer industry. Once that has been achieved, once you've purchased an account, whatever size it may be, in the relevant space with mostly legitimate followers, it's time to start building your foundation. This is where you need a variety of readily available botnet purchases aimed at bolstering credibility and size. It's actually very simple and can be done on your own with rudimentary coding skills, but for those who are less technically inclined, aka most influencers, it's easier to just purchase them. I myself used a website called Social Plug, but again, there are many more out there. Be advised, some of these websites, both the initial profile marketplaces and bot service platforms, can be scams. However, many of them are extremely precise on delivering exactly what it is that they advertise. This is where I purchased two bulk orders of Twitter Space listeners for a grand total of less than $1,000. Those two purchases would equate to roughly 10,000 concurrent listening profiles, and all of this, start to finish, took maybe 15 to 20 minutes. From there, using my old research burner account on Twitter with less than 300 followers, I spun up a podcast, started broadcasting, and sent myself to the top of the charts with a larger visible audience than anyone else in the entire world on the platform. Influencers that you follow, many of them do this. Many of them are doing it right now and far more will do it in the future because it works. I decided to do this in the most blatant way possible on purpose to make a point. However, had I wanted to, I could have obfuscated this, used a larger foundation, peppered in some secondary metric buys, and had the largest Twitter spaces in the world while using it as a launch pad to meet high profile guests and build connections. To be clear, this already happened even in my blatantly obvious example where people with many thousands of followers were joining just because of how large the space had become. I invited a few of them to speak and was completely transparent about what it was that I was doing, but with a touch more subtlety and deception, I could launch and hold the largest Twitter Spaces profile in the world for just a few thousand dollars. However, as with any deception-based growth tactic, you need to be careful because there are a lot of different ways to grow each with their own risk profile. The best way, organic traffic, of course. Make real content, people are interested, they follow or subscribe. End of story. That's ideal. But growth hackers and a larger than you probably expect number of influencers on social media that many of us follow in our day-to-day -day lives without even knowing it, they don't have the patience for that. Once you have your foundation, it's time to start bolstering routine numbers. For that, you need a botnet, ready and waiting to make every single thing that you post seem popular. Services for this are everywhere, yet again, just like the initial account purchase, and some of them are more expensive than others, so, you know, you can shop around. However, the end result is pretty simple. Pick your poison, pay the money, and suddenly everything you put out there seems to be popular. Excellent. 
Foundation, baseline popularity, and the ability to catapult yourself to the top spot on whatever platform you have chosen at any given time. TikTok Live, Twitter Spaces, even YouTube Streams. This is where we need to understand the balance though. Doing this requires finesse, because if you overstep, your reputation burns, and it will take a tremendous amount of effort and time to reverse that. Large Twitter spaces, for the example today, can be bought with less than $1,000, but without the proper foundation, you won't have enough real people in the mix to hide your tracks. What a lot of people simply do not realize, though, is that a broadcast containing, say, 10,000 viewers regularly could have 9,000 fake ones, and it would become incredibly hard for regular viewers to even tell in that circumstance. The 1 in 10 real people provide enough engagement as cover to avoid obvious assumptions. Also, sometimes you'll have a Twitter space where they routinely have technical difficulties, and that's usually a very clear indicator that they are botting the traffic. And all you really have to do, though, if you have, let's say, 1 in 10 real people, is use the bot traffic to promote yourself to the top or push yourself to the top of the listing and increase your desirability for guest speakers and brands while having enough real people to hide your tracks. For my experiment, since I was using a burner account with basically no followers at all, I put out a community post on YouTube. This post was barely viewed, hardly interacted with, and deleted fairly quickly. But maybe, I don't know, a dozen people from the community joined? And that alone was cover enough for the space to seem much more legitimate. Simply by occupying the top slot on Twitter, I was attracting people that had no idea who I was, even verified people. And after a few more got elevated to speakers, as, as they joined, I promoted them to speakers, I was having a consistent conversation with some really cool people as the number one Twitter spaces in the world that day for less than $1,000. This phenomenon, especially for what you consider to be larger influencers who actually do have disposable capital at their fingertips that they can do this with, is far more common than most people realize. I'm talking pervasive and incredibly frequent. Successfully determining who is or is not using this kind of tactic has become increasingly important as social media evolves. And as an example of what I'm talking about, originally discovered by Mr. Zero Chill on Twitter, we can look at transition.eth. Transition.eth, also known as Transition57, is an influencer in the NFT space who aggressively utilizes their platform to promote projects and cash in on developer marketing budgets, right? So they're making a lot of money doing this and they're kind of prolific in the space. That's fine, except it's a hacked account with all activity prior to 2021 purged that used to belong to Redskins Hall of Famer Ken Harvey, a football player. Most likely hacked and repurposed because of its verification checkmark back in the day, this account serves as a perfect example of how social media profiles are commodified and turned into monetizable foundations by bad faith actors using dishonest tactics. The industry of bot traffic is thriving right now. While purchasing my own personal bot army that took me to the number one spot on Twitter spaces, I actually had a bit of an issue where half of the order didn't come through on time but I was receiving minute by minute customer support and troubleshooting from an actual person who was making sure that my order was fulfilled with incredible response time. I, I shit you not, the customer service I received from a social media botting platform, right? From their like CS department was possibly the best customer service I've ever received in my entire digital life because the industry is not some sort of fringe economy with low traffic. It is a main stage tool constantly used used extensively by social media influencers especially, in order to artificially capitalize on sponsorships, marketing budgets, and fame. Twitter's ecosystem, focusing on Twitter because that's where I ran this experiment, isn't capable of shaking this off. Elon Musk has stated that he will eradicate the bots, but the Twitter we know today, the platform it is right now, cannot sustain that decision. Advertisers are wasting unbelievable amounts of money on falsified profiles without even knowing it, while Twitter harvests enormous amounts of revenue in the process, and the problem is only growing. What's to be done? No idea. Brands are spending money on sponsorships, projects are spending money for marketing, and artificially grown accounts are harvesting a hefty chunk of all of it in the process. That's bad for basically everyone except the growth hackers, and yet it continues day in and day out across the entire platform. Before ending though, this is the juicy part. I'll just, I'll leave you with this. Earlier, I talked about the account purchasing phase and how one of the sellers I showed wasn't the one that I used. That was intentional, not a slip up, because even though I didn't use it during my Twitter Spaces listener experiment, I did purchase an NFT profile, a Twitter profile, with over 100,000 followers. I live among you now, crypto bros. 
I'm out there with a Twitter account that should be relatively hard to identify without serious investigation and probably impossible to identify unless I tell you the at or the handle or whatever. And I will now attempt to cultivate that profile into a prominent crypto influencer. If I succeed, well, that's the obvious follow-up video, because if I succeed in crafting what appears to be a semi-famous crypto personality on Twitter, I will then reveal myself. Surprise, motherfuckers. Once again, reiterating that the influencers you all look up to in many separate industries have built their presence on lies and falsified traffic. Now, total transparency. The title? Yes, it was clickbaity, sort of. But having explored this world even just moderately, it is clear that the landscape of social media influence is an evolving economy where the presence of fraudulent methods, actors, and profiles has grown far larger than most people understand. A few thousand dollars, a couple months of laying low and infrequent posting, with a sprinkle of automatic engagement traffic, and you can become a social media influencer just like all the rest, maybe even bigger. Some of them get suspended, some accounts are punished, but the majority? The majority of them persist, harnessing traffic, commanding attention as if they were somehow legitimate, and defrauding brands all to the benefit of scammers and social media companies. They will never ban the bots. Twitter will never ban the bots as a generalized term here, at least not with any sincerity and effort, because the bots are a central pillar of their entire advertising world. More traffic, more views, more listeners, more metrics to advertise to the brands in the first place, more money. Most of what you see online, most of the people you see online are fake. And all it takes is a few thousand dollars to manufacture an entire influential social media identity for yourself, which can then be used for whatever you want. In the end, falsified profiles are becoming cheaper, more common, harder to detect, and more sophisticated by the day as the entire ecosystem of social media continues to orbit them as a core part of the advertising structure. Everyone you see online is fake, or at least you should treat them that way until you know for sure. That's it. If you want to support, please consider subscribing on Patreon or Locals, or maybe even buying the holiday merchandise. This video did end up costing quite a bit of money to make so that I could speak from a position of absolute authority, having personally gone through and done everything that I would be speaking about. Also, enormous shout out to Mr. Zero Chill on Twitter, who basically showed me this topic in the first place and inspired me. Links are down below. Also, the video sponsor, of course, as well as some other stuff, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night.